Now to run SQL, we have to do some preliminary steps. And I thought I'd quickly walk through them because this is actually perhaps the critical thing that actually makes you a successful SQL programmer. The first thing we do is check syntax. Now what's syntax? Whenever you throw an SQL at the database, does it uh, match the syntax definitions of the SQL language? I.e., could this SQL possibly be correct on any database? And you can see the example I've got there, my typical typo fingers, I've spelt from incorrectly. I don't care what database you have on the world that runs SQL, that will never run on it. That's the syntax check. Is it, does it pass syntax tests? If it does, we then do what's called a validity check. The SQL you can see there is actually syntactically valid. It is correct SQL, but it doesn't run on this database because I've spelt the column name wrong. Another database which had the column emp n o o, this would actually be correct SQL. So that's the subtle difference between syntax and validity. Syntax is could it run somewhere? Validity is will it run on this database? Once we've proved that it will run on this database, we need to work out how to best run it. And that's what we call the optimization phase. And we work out whether we should scan the whole table, use indexes, how to best use the joins, etc. Once we've worked out that, we then turn that English readable execution plan into the actual binary operations that the database will need to actually run your query. Where are the indexes? Where are they on the disk? How will I walk through them? What code path will I use? That's the row sourcing part. And after all of that, we finally get to run the thing. And that's the actual act of doing the workload to actually come up with your results. And assuming it's a select statement, it could be insert, update, or delete, but assuming it's a select, we would then fetch those results and bring them back to the client. As I said, that's a lot of preliminaries. And we call that parsing in Oracle speed. You can think of it in terms of compilation, in terms of like a 3GL. Now, the key thing is, parsing uses an incredible amount of CPU. It's very complicated to actually go through that process of working out if a SQL is valid and how to best run it. Let's be honest here, whenever you hurt CPU on a system, whether it's on premises or whether it's in the cloud, that's real money. We generally charge all our systems by CPU and that's not Oracle specific, almost all vendors out there nowadays charge their license fees in and based on some sort of usage of CPU, maybe disk, maybe network. But for Oracle, it's mainly about CPU. We generally give the rest of the stuff almost away for free. So if you're hurting CPU, you are spending more money. And the key thing is, where are you burning that CPU? You're burning it in the preliminary phases. So what you're actually doing is burning CPU while you're getting nothing done. That's the most harmful part. I'm spending more money to achieve less. You might be thinking that's impossible to avoid. Surely if I need to run a SQL statement, I need to actually prove that it is valid and syntactically correct and how to best run it. But as application developers, we'd be familiar with the concept of compilation. We don't compile our C programs or our Java programs every single time we run them. We compile them once and we run them many times. The great trademark thing of compile once, run anywhere. Wouldn't it be good if SQL could do that? And indeed it can. SQL is the same concept as a 3GL in reality. We compile it, that's the parsing element, and then we run it and ideally run it many times for one compilation. And some SQLs you can almost consider as being nearly the same. Here I have two different SQLs, but the only real difference between them is the actual employee number I'm actually looking up. I'm getting the same columns back from the database from the same table and I'm probably using the same actual access path to get that employee. If there's an index on the employee number, I'll use that. If there's no index, I'll scan the table. For literal values like that, where the SQL is identical except for those literals, it probably doesn't matter what the literal value is. And we can take advantage of that when it comes to parsing. It's this concept, what we call binding. What we can do is we can ask the database to parse the following statement. And notice I've actually stripped out the literal value. I've said parse that even though we don't know what the literal value is, we can just assume it's some placeholder. Once I've done all the work of parsing that SQL statement, when someone runs it with employee number of one, two, three, I've already done that parsing stage. When someone runs it with employee five, six, four, five, six, I've already done the parsing phase again. I can run that SQL multiple times for different employee numbers but I've only compiled or parsed it once. That cuts down dramatically on that CPU cost. It's the SQL equivalent of compile once, 
run anywhere. Let's do a demo to actually see, is it actually worth our while? Should we go to this extra effort? So this is the demo I'm gonna use. I'm gonna do a little bit of Java here. I'm just gonna walk through just a snippet of the code from the Java. So I'm gonna iterate 10,000 times. I'm simulating running 10,000 SQL statements. In this first example, I'm simply concatenating that loop variable into my SQL statement. As a result, I will actually throw 10,000 unique SQL statements at the database. Every single one will need to be parsed and go through all those steps because the literal values are different. I'm then gonna compare that to an example where I do what I described in binding. I'm gonna take that SQL statement and parse it just with a placeholder, that question mark you can see there. And once I've done that, then I'm going to actually execute it 10,000 times, substituting in the variable for that object thing. So I'm still gonna run 10,000 queries, but I'm only gonna to have to parse it once. So let's actually see a little demo of that. Apologies to my clicky keyboard, I like a clicky keyboard. So this is 10,000 individual queries. Every single query has to be parsed, even though it's a very trivial query. And we can see for 10,000, it took about six and a half seconds. Now, don't get me wrong, that's 1,500 queries per second. That's relatively impressive. Let's now do the equivalent, but this time using the bind information. So I parse once and then run the 10,000 queries reusing that parsing information. You can pretty much see it's a night and day difference. It's about, what have we got? About six and a half times faster just by avoiding that parsing overhead. And I wanna stress here, I'm using the smallest cloud database that I can, that I, I'm using the always free database. It's a single thread, single core, and I'm still getting, what, 10,000 queries per second as long as I can use some binding. I used to do this demo when servers were much, much slower, and people would say, wow, but that seems to have dissipated nowadays because even the slow version still looked pretty good. I'm doing 1,500 or you know, nearly sort of 1,500 executions per second. That might be more than enough for you. But let's make it real. The example we first did there was just a single query to on a primary key lookup to a, a table. We don't write queries like that in our applications. We generally have to join various tables together. Sometimes they involve views, et cetera. And obviously the larger your SQL statement and the more complex it is, the more work the database has to do to actually parse it. So I've grabbed a couple of objects here, done a bit more complicated joins. Let's now do the same test with this query. Once again, with literal values, lots of different values, and parsing it, and let's see if we get a more realistic difference. So this one, it actually takes in a number of how many executions I'd like to do. I'm just gonna do 10, only 10. We're parsing 10 unique queries for that complicated expression, and now we get a realistic idea of how hard parsing is for a complicated query. I'm now down to five per second, and it doesn't get better. If I make it double, I try to do 20 of them, somehow the database will improve, it won't. It actually takes twice as long. In fact, I've dropped to four per second. 1500 queries per second sounded good, but four queries per second, well, that's a disaster. Let's now convert to binding. Remember, we're comparing against now four to five per second. Well, now I'm at 79 per second, that sounds good, but that's actually just rounding error in my little demo. Let's do 2000 of them. Now it's 4000 per second, let's go. 10,000 of them. So I've bottomed out at about 5,000 per second. This is a much better representation of the cost of parsing. I've gone from five queries per second to 5,000 queries per second. You can get 1,000 times performance benefits for high volume SQL once you start using binding and not parsing everything. Mm -hmm.